Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about stacked area charts. So first of all, we're going to read in the data. I've already prepared the data. It's in my working directory, so, so to speak. It's called stackdata.csv. So we're going to use the read.csv command to pull that in. So we'll call it stacked data. We're going to use the read.csv command and we're just going to refer to the file name the benefit of having it in your working directory, which is normally found in your uh, My Documents folder, is that you don't need to uh, specify a massive file path beforehand like some of the previous examples that we've uh, done. So I'm going to run that stack data and I'm going to have a look at it in my actual, I could, I could look at the structure of it through here. Stacks data, run that line. So it's got um, three variables in it, a year, which just consists of repeating years because we want to stack it by the year. Um, it's got a type of website visitor, so casual visitors, um, and it's got the number of website hits in those periods by those different type of visitor types. This will become apparent when we look at the data. So as you can see, in year 2005 we've got casual visitors, 589. 2005, 648 for frequent, and 2005, 757 high level visitors. To make the stacked bar work, you need repeated observations. We could have easily done this by year, so it's going to stack three areas on top of each other in 2005, then 2006, etc. I'll show you how this works in a second. So let's import uh, ggplot. So we use the library command, if you remember, to import ggplot2. We're going to call this plots. Um, and we're going to use ggplots. The data is equal to the stacked data. Let's just select it from the list. Our aesthetics layer is going to be the x is equal to the stacked data. We're going to use the dollar notation to find which field that I need to use. This time it's going to be year on the x-axis. On the y-axis, oops, y equals. We're going to use the um, number of website hits. And we're going to specify the fill equal to that banding type. So whether they're a casual visitor, a frequent visitor, etc. etc. Let's run that. I've got to run both lines. As you can see that's successfully taken. I've got a value of plot, a list of nine in there. And then I'm going to just append the geometry layer to it. So plots with geom. And I'm going to do the plots plus geom underscore area chart. I'm going to specify an AES in this geometry layer. I'm going to set my colour equal to that of the stacks data type. And I'm going to also set the fill the same uh, type. Okay. So I run all these three lines. So this first part was to add the um, data in and specify the X and Y aesthetics. And specify, specify the fill type is equal to the actual type of visitor. Then we created a plot with the geometry. We added the original plot with the, that we created previously to a geometry layer here with aesthetics based on the color of each um, segment as the type and the fill of each segment as the uh, visitor type. You'll see that in the plots window in a second. Actually, one last thing I forgot to do, I've got to just tell the console to print out that to my plots window. And as you can see, that's done something weird as the axis, but you can see that the uh, number of visitors, casual visitors, frequent visitors and high level visitors go up. 
Let me just see if I can do this as numeric. Just to sort that out. No, not that one. I want this one. As numeric on the x-axis. Numeric. See if that fixes it. Let me just tweak that. No, that's still got an issue. We'd obviously need to fix this, but this is just used for uh, demonstration purposes. So it's saying 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 15. Let's just check that that's right. Yeah, it goes all the way up to 2015 for those three observations. But you can see it's increasingly getting more and more on the stacked area chart. We won't worry about this axis for now. So if I wanted to improve the display, so I want to do some kind of density gradient or some kind of mixture of similar colours, I can use what I just did previously. On the we're going to use the plot what we've created previously here, but we're going to do a plot with geometry 2 say, so to speak, that's what the variable we're going to call it geom2 and we're going to use the plot from the previous so to just to specify the aesthetics and the data that we're going to use we can add it to a geom underscore area chart we're going to make the colour equal to say black we're going to specify the size of each of the area as um, let's do point 0.2. I'll hit insert there, yeah, I have. And we set an alpha transparency level, so we're going to use that as 0.4, something like that, 40% transparent. Um, yeah, so let's see what that looks like first. So let's just plot with John, John 2, see what that comes out as. So you can see the lines now, the geometry lines change to black. We've got more of a transparency in between and the size size of the line is smaller. Let's just change that to 5 just to see what that does. So you've got thicker lines now essentially. Um, we're going to extend this again slightly. We're going to use a scale fill brewer command. And I'll show you what this does in a second. So what I would say here is we're going to use a palette. So if you can see here, this palette, direction, type. Again, anything that you need help on, help, scale, fill, brewer. If I run that line on its own, it brings me up all the different options that I can have and a few um, examples at the bottom. But for now, I'll let you navigate through the help system. It is actually really helpful. Try some of the options and uh, have a tweak. Uh, but for now, I'm going to keep my palettes equal to. And then what I'm going to do here under the help command that I've just put in, I'm just going to have a look at my colours. So that's a command that you can use to check all all, all native colours. So let's have a look. Uh, yeah, that gives you single colours. But for palettes, um, I'm going to use the, there's a couple of different palette types. So the list of palette types are blues, B U G N, blue and green, blue U P U. G M B U greens, greys, oranges, purples, reds, etc. etc. You can check them on the internet, but for now we're just gonna use blues. Okay. And let's just see what that does. Capital B. See what that does here to the output. 
if I just print that out again, because obviously I've not I've put that into memory, but I've not uh, printed it out to the console window. So you can see it there, lock. If I print it out to the console window, plot with geom2. Print that out. That'll then put it in my plots window for me. So you can see that looks starting to look quite nice, isn't it? Again, we'll get to the background images later on. This is called a theme at the back of it. All we can essentially alter through these ggplot commands is what you see in the forefront, so the geometries, the, the axes, etc. Um, but I've got a whole section covering themes later on. One final thing to note about um, stacked areas. If I wanted to reverse the um, the actual ordering here, so casual visitors, frequent visitors, high level visitors, and I wanted to put this at the top, so stack it on the top, I'd need to use a breaks command. I'll show you how to do this um, right now. So let's just use what we've done here. Let's copy this again. And we'll call this one underneath here. We'll type another command. We'll call it um, plot with geom break river breaks reversed rev okay so it's important to note that we're going to use the plot so that's the data and the geometry decora declarations from here so that all stays the same that's what the benefit of keeping them as variables is you can change the geometries without having to change all this again time after time if you put this on one line in the command you added the geometry and you think you didn't use the variable it wouldn't store that in memory so you, you you'd have to keep retyping it and it's to be honest computationally uh, expensive and heavy heavy for you because you've got to type more things out if that makes sense probably not <laughs> right okay um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to after the scale fill brewer with my palettes i'm also going to add another command here so in the scale fill brewer i can use the breaks command equals and I'm going to use the reverse rev because I've got three levels here I'm going to also use the levels command and then I'm just going to use the stacked data and I'm going to say my type so basically what that's saying is reverse each level so we know it basically levels or count let me just show you on its own levels mm -hmm. so the levels um, if I use the stacks data and I use type and run that line it shows me the three levels that I've got in there and they're they are basically got index values so casual visitors is number one so if I went stat data type and I did index notation like we learned in the um, tutorials if I did it levels and then I did it here would that work no, <laughs> I think I have to use step. Okay, I have to do this. I think one. Yeah. So basically, what I've said there is, I've got that index notation part wrong. Of my levels of the stack data type, give me the first element, and that obviously is casual visitors, as you can see there. So basically, it's just a way of uh, assigning a numerical value to each of those, and you use the levels command to do that. So basically, what it's saying is instead of having one, two, three, make it three, two, one. So we'll run this now because we've, we've completed that command, and then we're just going to print this out to the console window again. So breaks, nice long variable name. And as you can see, what happened there, um, if we go to the previous plot, Casual visitors, high level visitors, that's now been flipped. Yeah. So essentially it just flips the colouring. So high level visitors becomes here. 
instead of being at the top. So yeah, that's essentially all it does. Um, but essentially that's, that concludes the um, how to create stack theory charts section of this tutorial. Like I say, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube videos. Please uh, keep, um, keep yourself updated with the new updates to my Hudson's Hacks page. Uh, and I'll see you at the next tutorial, guys. So thanks for staying with me, and I'll see you again. Thank you.